The head of Planned Parenthood says the organization must confront the background of founder Margaret Sanger and her ties to both white supremacy and eugenics in an opinion piece in the New York Times over the weekend. Alexis McGill Johnson said Sanger will remain influential in the organization, but added, quote, as we tell the history of Planned Parenthood's founding, we must fully take responsibility for the harm that Sanger caused to generations of people with disabilities and black, Latino, Asian American and indigenous people. Joining us now is Reverend Dean Nelson, Executive Director of Human Coalition Action. Reverend Nelson, welcome back. Great to see you. Uh, first off, what was your reaction when you read that article? Uh, what did you think and its admission uh, by the head of Planned Parenthood? You know, on the one hand, I was uh, I was shocked uh, because for decades, many pro-life leaders have been decrying the eugenic practices of its founder, Margaret Sanger. Uh, so, but I was uh, I was happy to see that they acknowledged uh, the reality of what uh, their history is. But at the same time, I know quite honestly that the real problem is is you cannot acknowledge that history without also acknowledging the fact that Planned Parenthood strategically has placed 80% of their surgical abortion facilities in minority communities. Yeah, and I know that you've been quite vocal about Margaret Sanger, as you mentioned, uh, many pro-life uh, organizations as well. What role do you think that played, if any, in getting Planned Parenthood to come to grips, so to speak, with their founder's history? And, and why do you think they spoke up now? You know, that's a great question. I do believe that the effort that we did last year with over 120 black leaders signing on to a document calling for Planned Parenthood to deal with its racist past, uh, I'm not certain why right now. Uh, I know that there's continued pressure uh, within this, um, you know, Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, moment in, in America. Uh, so I believe that there's a, a lot of pressure that they're they're receiving. But the reality is, is that Planned Parenthood, it should not uh, continue to operate as they have. Their name suggests that they parent, but they don't empower women to parent. What they do is they sell abortions. And we want to help uh, those around the country to know that there are better alternatives like what we do at Human Coalition by providing free services to women who find themselves in this difficult situation. And Reverend, for those who may not be all that familiar, uh, can you talk a little bit more about Margaret Sanger? Sure. Um, many people may not know, uh, you know, at the uh, beginning of the 1900s, you know, Margaret Sanger began to open up um, birth control facilities, particularly in New York City. Uh, as the organization would grow, it would become the name of it would ultimately become uh, Planned Parenthood. Uh, some people are unaware that in 1939, she wrote a letter to Clarence Gamble of the uh, Gamble, uh, Procter & Gamble fortune, stating that we don't want word to go out, that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And she would use a strategy that they would refer to as the Negro Project, where they would appeal uh, to blacks through ministers to try to help uh, encourage them to reduce their numbers. And so what we're trying to do is to bring light to the fact that Planned Parenthood is the largest number, largest abortion provider uh, in the country. And while nationally abortion numbers continue to decrease, Planned Parenthood's abortion numbers continue to increase because it's part of their business model. And Margaret Sanger is the founder of this organization. And Reverend, what's next for the pro-life movement to, to raise even more awareness about Planned Parenthood? Yeah, what we are working on in cities uh, across the country with other pro-life organizations is not just decrying uh, the real truth about Planned, Parent Planned Parenthood, but also uh, elevating solutions. Uh, in uh, the state of Texas, for instance, we uh, are pushing uh, legislation like uh, um, Emma, which is Every Mother Matters Act. And we would love to see uh, these type of alternatives that are embraced by Republicans and by, uh, by Democrats in certain states to really provide real solutions. 75% of the women that uh, we engage with say that they would choose life if their circumstances were different. And so we're trying to elevate um, legislation and ideas that provide real alternatives for women. And that's what Human Coalition does uh, day in and day out with uh, over a, a thousand, excuse me, a hundred thousand women that we will engage uh, each year. 
Reverend, we have probably about 30 seconds left, not a whole lot of time, but wondering if you have any final thoughts or anything that you feel is important for our viewers to know. We just want them to, rec to, to remember that Planned Parenthood uh, is not an organization that is focused on, on parenting. Uh, they don't empower women to do that. What they do is they sell abortions. And we want to encourage people uh, of all goodwill and faith to, uh, to help us to get that message out, uh, whether it's in black, Latino, or white communities, that there are other alternatives for women who are facing these difficult uh, challenges of, of, of abortion. And so we want people to recognize that and they can feel free to visit us at uh, Human Coalition's website to find out more information. Reverend, thank you so much for your time today and thank you for what you do. We appreciate it. Reverend D. Nelson, Executive Director of Human Coalition Action. Thank you again. Thank you so much. God bless you.